Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 83. Day, day 3083, 3 is to indicate that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 83, we are on page 292, and today we'll discuss the topic of scatter plot. Topic of scatter plot, we'll deal with the example that you see on that page, on page number 292, as I said just now. On page 292, you see the example there, 4.1.2. And here's what it says. I hope the book is in front of you as always, so that you can read the entire problem as it appears in the book. <coughs> because I abbreviate, do you understand? This is the abridged version of it. Here's what it says. It says, a bicycle, a bicycle trainer is studied 10 bicyclists. First of all, we are only going to deal with 10 on the blackboard. In the book it says 50. We are not going to deal with 50 because that's going to be obviously too much. He studied 10 bicyclists to examine how finishing time is related to training. And hopefully the more you train, the faster you'll get. That's, that's the hope to see. And that's what we hope to see. So he, he studied 10 bicyclists and he kept track of their uh, level of training. He had developed some, some system there. It explains in the book. And he studied how long it, take them, it takes them to finish the, uh, the, the course, finishing time. Here's, here's the data. There are 10 of them. So again, one more time, first of all, in the book, they do not give you the data, we just have the graph, there is no data there, so I'm going to give you the data here, but we're only going to do 10 bicyclists, not 50 of them, and then we're going to plot it. There we go. So here we have the training units, training units, and here we have the finishing time. Finishing time measured in hours and minutes. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, nine, and ten. Just ten people, that's all it is. And here's what we're told. The first guy trained for 100 units and he, f he managed to finish in three hours and ten minutes. I'm not going to put them so far away, even though it says hours and minutes, we're going to put them together because it sort of looks ugly to me if you put them so far away. 3 hours and 10 minutes. Well, the next one trained for only 20 units and he managed to finish in 5 hours and 10 minutes. The next one was 60, 60 units and he managed to finish the race in 4 hours exactly. Then we have 20 units of training and his time was 4 hours and 30, 30 minutes. Then we have a guy who trained for 80 units. He finished in 3 hours and 20 uh, 3 hours and 20 minutes. As I said before, uh, don't look for this thing, uh, this information, this data. It is not in the book. I'm just giving it to you. Then we have next guy who trained for 30, 30 units and his time was 4 hours and 20 seconds. Next one we have another 30 units who managed to do it in 4 hours and 50 minutes. Then we have 70 units and he did it in 4 hours and 30, 30 minutes. The next guy we have is he, he trained for only 40 units and he managed to finish the race in four hours exactly. And finally, the tenth guy, who trained for 50 units, and he managed to do it in four hours and 20 minutes. Let's plot them, shall we? Let's plot them. So this is how the problem appears. You already have it. It's in the book. I'm going to erase it now because we need the room. We're going to do, we're going to do the discarded plot on that side, obviously. Let's see what we can do. As always, as best as we can do. It's not going to look as pretty as what you see in the graph, uh, in the book, obviously, but we'll see what we can do. One more time, it says, example 1, 4.1.12, a bicycle, a bicycle trainer studied 10 bicyclists to examine how finishing time was related to training. And this is what he found. This is what we found. So, where did I put my marker? There we go. On the y-axis, we're going to have the, the time, and we're going to 
measure the training index, we're going to put the training index on the x-axis because training index, of course, is the independent variable and independent variable always goes on the x-axis. It, it is independent variable because the amount of time that you're going to take to finish the race depends on how well trained you are. The little training that you have, the more time you will take, the more you train, the less time you'll take. Therefore, the amount of time that you take depends on, because therefore it is the dependent variable, time is going to go on the y-axis, depends on the amount of training you do. Therefore, training amount is the independent variable. So here we go. Oh, Jesus. That is no good. One more time. On the x-axis, we're going to have the training, training index. Training index. And that goes all the way from, we see, all the way from 100 to 20. So we'll do from 10 through 20. So let's do it here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and finally, 10. They have to be reasonably, uh, they have to be, we have to be reasonable, they have to be equally, e equally distance. This, this distances have to be all equal, so we do the best as we can. We eyeball it, and we do the best we can. So this is 100, this was 10, 20, 20, 40, 60, and 80. Well, on the y-axis, we're going to measure the time, we're going to measure the time, the finishing time that is, I'm not right here. Finishing time goes on the y-axis here, measured in terms of hours and minutes, and it starts. It starts with three hours and ten minutes and goes all the way up to five hours and ten minutes. So lowest I can see here is three hours and ten minutes. So we're going to start with three hours, and this is how we show it. We're not going to start with one because it will take up too much room. So here's here's we do it a little bit better. There we go, and we'll start with three. So this is three, uh, four, five, and somewhere up there it's going to be six. But we, we're not going to go up to six, and I'm, going to, I'm not going to worry about three. So if this is three, pay attention here. This is three, this is four. So what, we, what we're going to do is going to break this into six equal parts. One, two, three, four, five, and six. There we go. One, two, three, four. Five, and I think I'm going to move that up a little bit, just a little bit. Voila. So this is three hours, four hours, five hours, and it only goes up to five hours and 30 seconds, I think. So five hours and 10 seconds, so I'm just going to do three more. One, two, and three. And this, this final point represents five hours and 30 seconds. And that's the time, as we said. This is the time. As we said here with the arrow, this is the finishing time on the y-axis. Are we ready? Let's plot it. Let's see what we can do here. Let's get going, shall we? So number one, we have 100 and 310. 100 and 310. Three is right here, and this is 10. Of course, in the exam, this will be given to us. Do you understand? We are plotting it ourselves from the scratch, from the raw data, so that we can have a better understanding of what it is all about. And again, it goes from three to four, and we have divided up to six equal parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, which means each one of these segments represents 10 10, 10 seconds or 10 minutes, 10 minutes rather, because it's hour and minutes. So three hours and 10 minutes, three hours, three hours and 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, and four hours. Next we have 20 and 510. 20 and 510, there is 510 right here. And 20 is gonna be way up here. You cannot rush it, otherwise it, it, it just does not come out too nice. 60 and four, 60 and four, 60 is right here, four is right here. Sixty and four. Then we have twenty and four thirty. Twenty and four thirty. Twenty and four thirty. This was four. One, two, three. We're right here. Okay. Why don't we number them? I should I should have numbered them so we can keep track of them. Hundred was right here. Hundred was right here. Let's call him Mr. One. This was twenty. That was Mr. Tw twenty and five ten. That was Mr. Two. Sixty was Mr. Three. This was Mr. Four. I don't know why they have to be Mr. It could be Miss. So that's four. Then we have we are up to five. Eighty and three twenty. Eighty and three twenty. Ten and twenty. There we go. 
the real miss. The real miss 5. Number 6 is 30 and 420. 30 and 420 right here. 30 and 420. This is 4. 1, 2 right here. 30 and 420. Voila. And that was going to be individual number 6. Then we have 30 and 450. 30 and 450. Uh, 450 we just keep on going right here. 450, that's your 7. Then we have 8, 70, and 430. 70 and 430. This is 70, 430. 1, 2, 3, and 70. Voila. And that was uh, number 8. And then we have 40 and 4, 40 and 4, 40 and 4. Right here is 4. This is 40. That was number 9. The penultimate one and finally the, the ultimate one, the final one, 50 and 420. 50 and 420. 1 and 2, 50 and 420. And this is what they have done there in the book, except they have 50 of them. You see there are 50 dots. If you, if you were to count the dots, you'll see that there are 50 of them because they had 50 observations. Now just to emphasize, I'm going to color them so that you can see them. There is number 1, number 5, number 3, number 9, number 10, number 8, number 6, number 2, number 7, number 4. There we go. This is how they look like and our job is now to fit a train. That's what is called fitting a train. In other words, we draw a straight line where our job is to minimize the deviation. For example, for example, I'm just, I'm just going to do it very lightly, this would not be a good fit because the deviation is too much from each individual. Nor would be a good fit for us to do it like this. We're going to put it somewhere in the middle so the distance from each observation to the actual crane line that we're plotting freehand, there is, there is no, there is no, there is a science to it obviously, but we're not going to do it here because, the, and that science is called regression. Uh, there is a technique called regression where we actually estimate the slope and then we actually have the proper line where we do actually minimize the difference from the observed uh, value and the value that we're predicting on the line, on the trend line. We're not doing it that way, so we're just going to do it freehand. Do you understand? We're just going to do it freehand and we're going to try to minimize these deviations, these deviations from the trend line. So here we go, this is the most important part. I don't want to mess it up. I should have had a ruler, but I don't have it. So, oh, there is, we, we missed out five. What was that? No, that's, that's, not, that's not number five. That's just 530, that's the time. I have to make sure that I do a decent job of it. So here we go. Voila. I'm not going to get greedy. I think I'm going to leave it like that. Because the more we play with it, the more it's not going to look better. It's going to look uglier. As you can see, the, the blackboard is slippery, so it's going to go all over. There is our trend line. This is called the trend, trend line, and that is what is given to us. That is what is give, will be given to us in the exam. And based on that trend line, they will ask you a couple of questions. So let's let's ask ourselves a couple of questions. Do you understand? Let's ask ourselves first question. We're gonna well, we have no choice, even though we're gonna eventually need this information. But you have it, and I have it, so we're gonna have to refer to it. But we need the room to do the problems. We need to raise all of this thing. Make sure I didn't leave out anything. So we have done the job. We have we, we have we have fit a trend trend line, as you can see on the blackboard. Here's the first question. It says. These questions are not in the book, you understand? They are not in the book. These are bonus questions. They are not in the book. A bicyclist, a bicyclist with a training of 60 units will finish in approximately 
how many hours. So we look at the trend line, trend line, we look at the 60 units of training and we see what the trend, trend line is predicting based on the 60 units of training. And you don't have to worry about it. In a question such as this one, the answer choices are going to be far apart where they, where, where they do not leave any room for ambiguity. Obviously not. So the answer choices are going to be far apart as long as we do a decent job. So let's, let's look at 60. Oh, right here is 60, right here. Right here is the 60. You see, right here is the 60. And the question was, the question was, if I were to trend for 60 units, if I were to trend for 60 units, then what does the trend line predict that my finishing time is going to be? The trend, trend line predicts that if I trend for 60 units, I should be able to finish the race in this much time. Looks like this much time, right here. Oh, voila. And that's, this was 3 hours. 310, 320, it looks like 330 to me. That's all it is. So, bicyclists with a training of 60 units will finish in approximately how many hours? The answer is 3 hours and 30 seconds. That's all. That's all. And as I said, the answer choice is far enough, far enough apart where you don't have to worry about it. They're not going to give you 3 hours and 30 minutes uh, and 3 hours and 20 minutes and 10 minutes or 15 minutes. They're not, they're not going to do that. Very simple, very straightforward question. The next one we're going to do is a little tricky. The next question says, so the answer was here, 3 hours and 30 minutes, 3 and a half hours. The next question says, what is the approximate slope of the trend line, of the trend line? What is the approximate slope of the trend line? So what we do here is to find that slope of the trend line, we pick any two points on this blue line that you see there, that's our trend line, we pick any two points and we're going to pick, let's pick one of this as a, we already have it, so let's use, make a use of this one, so we're going to use this one, and then any other points on this line, and we find the slope of, of a line going through those two points. Do you understand? And it doesn't matter which points you pick, because any two points that you pick on this line, they will have the same slope, whether you pick this point and that point, or this point or that point, the slope between, as long as it falls in the blue line, the slope between a point over here, let's say, a, a, let's say a, a point like this one, from here to here, the slope, of course, is going to be the same as a slope between this point and that one, for example, because they both they are all in the same same line. So let's do this, shall we? So we have to pick two points, any two points, as I said. You understand? Any two points will do as long as they are on the trend line, as long as they fall on the blue line. We should be able to estimate the slope of this line, and that's what they're looking for. They're looking for the estimate. We cannot do the approximate. Approximate slope. We would have had the approx we would have had the exact slope of this trend line had we actually done this statistical analysis, which GRE does not require you, something known as regression, something known as OLS, letter O, letter S, and letter L and letter S, which stands for ordinary least square. We don't have to worry about any of that. Do you understand? GRE is very, very simple. They just want us to estimate the slope, and that's what we're gonna do. So let's pick two points. Let's pick, let's pick, let's say point A, point A, we're going to call this point A that we just located right here, and point A, which just said, had the uh, 60, 60 units of training there, and 3 hours and 30 minutes of time. Let's pick one more point, shall we? Should we pick, should we just pick this one, the one we already picked here? 20 and looks like 5, looks like 450, 450 and 20, let's do that. 20 and 450, right here, we're calling this point B. Okay, and for emphasis, just like we put a circle around the whole thing, I'm just going to put a circle around this thing so we can see this is point B. And these are just two points that we have chosen. The first point that we chose to work with is the point that they actually asked for in the question. It says, bicyclists with the training, unit, training of 60 units will take how long? 16 is right here. It's to turn that with 30, 3, 3, 30. Since we already have it, let's make a use of it. And we pick just this one. Now we need to find the slope. Let's do it up here. We need the room. I do not know what it's going to come out to be because the two points that I chose myself in my notes are different than what we have here. So we'll see what comes out of it. It should be very close to each other, obviously. Because, you know, when you're plotting and when you're drawing, it's, it's not going to be exactly. So let's So the slope, as we know, 
slope, as we know, is the change in y over the change in x. Change in y, on the y-axis we have the time. So we have to look at the change in time. So listen very, very carefully, okay? Going from, and we're going to measure the change in time in minutes. And change in x is the units of training. Units of training. So, going from 4 hours and 50 minutes to 3 hours and 30 minutes, uh, 3 hours and 30 minutes, from, from 4 hours and 30 minutes to 3 hours and 30 minutes would have been 60 minutes. But we're not going from 3.30 to 4.30, we're going from 3.30 to 4.50. So, that's another 20 minutes. So it's 100 minutes. Actually, this works out very nicely. It's 100 minutes. It's going to make our math, our, it's going to make our math a little bit easier. Oh, actually, this works out just fine. So that's very simple. And, oh, we got lucky here. The change in training is just 40 units. There you go. By golly. Looks like, looks like we, we are estimating it as 2.5. We are measuring the slope as 2.5. That's our estimate. 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, what? 2.5. That's the slope of it, two and a half, and if you want the units, it's two and a half minutes per one unit. Let's, let's look at the interpretation of it. 10 divided by 4 is two and a half, you understand? We can erase this thing so we can, we can provide the interpretation of it. The slope we estimated as two and a half. And we know the units, it is minutes per, per one unit, per one unit. Let's multiply, let's multiply that by 10. If you were to multiply that by 10, this, this two and a half per one unit is what it is. This is the minute, and this is the unit. Let's multiply top and bottom by 10. And so that we can, so that we don't have to work. Let's just watch what, what happens. What it tells us is that, what, what, it tells, what, what it tells us is that, for every 10 units of training, For, for every 10 units of training, I don't know how to spell training. For every 10 units of training, one can expect, one can expect, one's finishing time to drop to drop by 25 minutes that's what it tells us it says for every for every 10 units of uh, training we can expect our finishing time to drop by 25 minutes. Now in the book, if you look at the page, okay, I'm going to show you where it is. Uh, actually, I'm going to pick up the book and actually show you so that you can see. They come up with a very different estimate. They come up with a very different estimate because they have a 50 observation and their trend, trend line is very, it fits very, more data that you have, the more accurate you're going to be able to estimate the slope, the relationship between the two variables. So this is what they have with 50 units. And right here on the next page, right, right above where it says line graph, right above it, this paragraph right here, where I'm pointing here, or is it above it? Let me see. Yes, right here, they come up with the estimate. And they come up with the estimate of 16. It says for every 16 minutes, one can, uh, oh, for, for every 10 units of training, for every 10 units of training, what we're saying is that for every, for every 10 units of training, we can expect our finishing time to drop by 25 minutes. That's what this is predicting. But in the book, the way they estimate it, they're saying that your, tra your finishing time will drop by only, fifth, only 16 units, uh, 16 minutes. It's a different estimate because they're using two different points, or two points different than what we picked, and they have a better data set because there are more observations. What we're going to do next is, actually, well, for that I need, to need, I need to leave the room for one second. I'm just going to the room the next door. I'll be right back. I should have done it ahead of time.
Actually, you no, know, I've changed my mind. Let's not, let's not continue. I think this, uh, the, the, the video is already too long. There are a couple of pro Why don't we do this? Uh, we'll do it in the next video. Do you understand? I'll see you next time in the next video tomorrow. And we'll do a couple of more problems. Two problems that relates to the same data set that you see there. Same graph, same data set that you see there on page number 292. Two very nice questions that appeared, that appeared in the second edition of the book. As you can see, I'm holding in my hand the same book, the official GR, GRE guy. Second edition, it appeared there, those two questions they appeared in the second edition with the same data set. And they also appeared in the first edition. I'm holding in my book the first edition of the book. For some strange and inexplicable reason, they have decided to take out those two questions in the third edition. So I do not know why. They were decent questions. I'm going to give them to you in the next video. We're not going to try to do all of them right now because it gets to be too much. And uh, we'll see what we can do. They should not have taken them out. They were, they were neat, nice questions. And that's what we need. We're simply looking at the picture, simply looking at the graph is not going to do us any good because, unless we know what, they, what, could they might, what could they possibly ask on this, on the, on, based on this graph and how to go about answering those questions. So they give you the graph, whether it's bar graph or pie chart or scatter plot or whether it's histogram or whether it's line graph. They give you a graph and they ask you two or three questions. That's all it is. And you have to answer those two or three questions based on what is given to us in front of us without any data. There is no red no, no data. It's just a picture that is given to us. We have to observe it. We have to study it and answer the questions. So I don't know why they, take, why they took them out. We'll do them tomorrow, okay? Bye now.